Hello everyone, it's BDBSSB. I'm here today to show how to add pallet auto load specialization um, from this guy here. Not even going to try to pronounce it, <laughs> but uh, awesome mod. It's been used a lot in the past. This is a newer version. There's a mighty Mike out there does excellent videos. He showed how to add this and I think one of the first versions. It's changed quite a bit since then. It uh, doesn't hurt to watch his video as well. It does a great job. Shows the background of the mod but this one here has a lot more settings to it. You actually use some more triggers. So that's what I'm going to do today. You will need this uh, mod if you're not familiar with it in your mod folder for the auto load to actually work. Um, I also suggest that you download, if you're going to follow along, um, this example trailer as well. I also wanted to show you, usually when I pop this up, see if it does it again today. Um, Dogface, he's in my Discord channel. He has some versions of it as well. Make sure to check him out. Um, he has some great stuff out there. He's great help on the Discord channel as well. You're going to, if you don't have easy dev controls, um, I'll put a link to that as well, but we're going to use that a little bit to add bales and pallets to the to the game so we can try this out. So, enough of that. Like I said, just make sure you have the auto load specialization. And I'm going to actually copy lines from this mod here. So if you want to follow along, I suggest getting this. You have to have that. So we'll go ahead and close out of there. I'm just simply going to use the drop deck from in-game. Um, unfortunately, I did get on the author's Discord channel. You cannot use two loading areas, so I was not able to add loading up here and down here. So we're just going to concentrate on loading down on this platform for now. Um, I was hoping maybe you would add that in the future. I tried some different tricks, wasn't getting able, wasn't getting it to work. So I went to his channel and he he confirmed you cannot do that. So. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the XML mod descript. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up his example mod and his mod descript in Notepad. Then we're going to go into, see, I need to get rid of one of these folders so I don't mess up. Start editing the wrong file. I'm going to open up the, I just made a quick exported the trailer copied over the needed files that's again another video if you want to know how to do all that I've got an old old video out there on how to make a mod out of an in-game piece of equipment uh, we're gonna move this to other view um, we're gonna move this to other view as well so what we're gonna start with is the mod descript so what we need to grab is we're gonna scroll on down this doesn't have to be in there, I believe, but I suggest it because this will force anyone that uses this mod that you're going to do to have the auto loader mod in their folder. If not, it'll cue them to where to download it from uh, FS22. So we will copy that line. We're going to throw it down here. And then you do need this. You need the vehicle type. Um, this basically adds a vehicle type um, to the game. There's, I don't know if there's any specialization videos out there. I thought about doing it, but it sometimes it gives me some issues as well. I did do a tutorial on it on Farmer Boys on my uh, sister website, I guess you could call it. But what I am going to do, this is a trailer by default. If you go to Drop Deck, the vehicle type is trailer. And if you're not familiar with specializations, basically there's, there's different things uh, like input, output, attachments that are attached to that trailer specialization. But we need to add the autoloader pallet script. And to do that, you have to basically make your own load or uh, vehicle type. Now, I'm going to actually go in. Oh, sorry about that doorbell. <laughs> I'm going to actually go in and make my own name here. Because the problem is, is if you just use that generic name, you can do that. But if someone else wants to make another mod and it uses that same name and they add a specialization down here, it's going to cause you some issues. One of the two mods aren't going to work or it's not going to load correctly. So I'm just going to just simply put in here tutorial auto load trailer for now. Simple enough. And we need to actually copy that line or that name 
and make sure we actually change our trailer to that as well or it's not going to load in these attributes and specializations. Um, we've already got in the XML there. I just put auto load BD on there for now for the title. So we're going to go ahead and save this and we're done with the mod descript as far as I can remember so we can get rid of those files. So what we want to do is we want to uh, scroll on down here. I'm going to show how a little bit how to use config sets. Um, it's a little bit outside of the the auto load, but I'm just going to kind of show you an example of how you can actually use that. So I'm going to copy that whole section. We're going to swing on down. We'll just go right here underneath the wearable and washable stuff. I'm going to paste that section in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this here. We're only, I'm only going to use two. And I'm going to keep the default as true on that one. So simply come up and just make sure you delete the right amount of lines if you do this. Because you basically there's your configuration set start. Configuration set in. Don't, don't get your configuration sets or you'll have issues. So we're just going to delete those. Um, so basically if you have is default true down here somewhere it'll just load that automatically in the store if it's on top you don't need it as long as there's no you know defaults anywhere else i'm not we can i mean we can set this up to charge it's not a big deal it's, that's just basically the cost um as a default i'm not even going to have a charge for that and rather than do a callback and not get into that right now i'm just going to type in a name here we're just going to type in auto load and then we'll come in here and type in non auto load for now and then we don't need so basically this is where this configuration sets comes in and actually looks for specific areas in your XML we're only going to use the auto loader because we're going to leave the tension belts on all the units so we're going to go ahead and delete all those sections we're going to delete all those sections as well and so all that's saying is going to look in the auto loader parameters one index and this one's going to look for two and we're going to get that over here again we're just going to copy clean this up a little bit we're going to copy this whole auto loader section Control c go down a couple lines we want to keep this um i haven't looked at what he's got going on here. I think I think these are just so you can set parameters different. I'm going to show you how that works a little bit. I'm going to delete that section. And we're going to move this down. So I'll hit control X. Again, I'm going to delete a couple of lines here. There we go. Configuration down. Paste that in. So what that's going to do is for the auto load. It's going to look at auto auto loader palette index one, which is this guy. It's going to look from here to here. For index two, it's going to look for the next index, so that would be this guy here. And because there's no parameters in there, it's basically not even going to load the auto load at all. It's just going to ignore it. So it's just going to be a typical trailer like default. So I just wanted to show you that's just a simple add-in on actually doing a configuration set if you want to have. I'm working on another one right now. It's the bowl trailer, I think. It, it actually works as a manure spreader, tipper, some different things. I'm going to try to add that in because uh, I'll show you. It's a little different in FS22 because now the pallets and the bales are literally on top of the wagon. There's full mass and they move around, so it becomes a little bit of an issue if you don't have the side. So that's, that's where this comes in, tension belts. If you have tension belts on your uh, vehicle or trailer or whatever you want to call it, Make sure you do use tension belt true. I think I can get rid of that now. And then you have these parameters. I'm going to show how they work. What I will do is get into this max objects. I know that on the unit I'm doing right now, the square bale 120s, 180 is a lot of bales on that trailer. It's not real high, but again, when you're bouncing across the field, they can kind of fall off on your move around and then doesn't want to reload into the into the area so I'm going to set it at 180 and because I did that you can literally remove the max objects in this section um, because if there's nothing down here it's going to revert to this 
Now I believe these numbers will override that, but and there's a height. I messed with some heights as well. You can override heights, but I'll get into that again once we get into game. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we have for the most part all the the stuff entered into your XML. We're gonna actually open it up um, in Giants Editor and show you what we need to do. So again, you can look at the example. I'm just going to simply start out by creating a transform group. I'll cut that out. And I'm gonna, I usually put stuff in the visuals because then I know I'm inside a um, transform group that will move with the vehicle or the trailer. And I'm just going to call this auto load for now. And then I'm going to need a, another transform. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out and paste it in as so. Then we're going to go back into the XML and start looking at what we actually need. So you have a trigger. You have one trigger there and two triggers here. But then you also have a base node. They use body. I'm going to call this load area. Um, and then I'm going to actually use um, load area trigger and then we're going to call this pickup trigger left and pickup trigger right and I like to add these in and then copy and paste them into Giants Editor so that we know we get them correct in fact I'm even going to come down here in my mappings right now I'm just going to copy a line and I usually will come into here and just delete the name and the index, so we need one, two, three, four. So I can simply hit copy that. And I can go ahead and copy those two, add a line. So now we have four. So we're going to simply have load area trigger, copy that, paste it there. We're going to have pickup trigger left, copy that, paste it there. Pick up trigger right, copy it, paste it in, and we have load area, copy, paste. So again, we'll just hit save for now just in case something goofy happens. We're going to go into the trailer. Um, Alright, so auto load is just a, just a transform for me to put the stuff into. The actual node that they were using for body I'm calling the load area, so I'm just gonna hit. I'm gonna copy that name. Sorry for bouncing back and forth here, and then I'm gonna simply paste it in as our node as a load area, and uh, I'll get. We'll get to that in a little bit. I'm gonna create a primitive cube. So this is where we're gonna get our triggers. I'm gonna show you how to make a trigger, and I'm gonna show you how to steal information or copy. We shouldn't call it steal. We're gonna copy information from his example trailer, but it's simply just a cube. We're going to cut that, I'm going to paste it in. So this one is going to be our load area trigger. So I'm going to copy that, come back in and just change the name, to load area trigger. And what we want to do is just simply place this on the trailer. We want things to go. This isn't the ultimate location. I think this is kind of... I'll show you in game it's basically showing a layout this will actually determine where things get loaded but I think it affects your uh, on loads from the sides and the back and it actually shows a template on the trailer itself so you want to try to get this as close as you can and uh, I'll show you how things change we'll we usually get into game and test a little bit but I'm just going in fact I'm not even going to do the, the height yet because that will change when I scale it we're just going to scale it this way we're just touching the front, pull on back. Let's go to the front again to where you can see that highlighted area kind of disappear. In fact, we can still go wider because we have room in the back. So we'll go like so. And I'm going to do something else. I'm going to control L and it adds a light to your scene so you can see a little better. Another trick is if you want to kind of keep it in that view, if you click on that light and hit control F, it shows, it's going to 
point that light in the exact direction of the camera. If I point it this way, hit Control F, you're gonna get the gonna get some of that shadow back, as you see. But if I actually go like I said, like here, Control F again, you lose that shadow. Just make sure we delete that light because that can cause you troubles when you get in the game because it's gonna try to load extra objects outside these parent objects. So let's go back to the load trigger. We're okay on the back, or probably a little big, because I need to go all the way. If you hit the minus button, I'll slow down your nav speed right here, because I'm zooming around a little bit, trying to move with my mouse. So, we're okay on the front, but I think we're going to be hanging off on the back. So this is kind of a trial and error. I wish you could, I thought about bringing in a cube and putting the orientation down here, that way when you zoomed it out, it started at the front and went back, but I don't know how that will affect things in the game so I did not do that I should have tested that before I did the video but oh well I think we would be all right there but I'm gonna go ahead and zoom it down just a little bit more Let's see if we can grab this arrow pull it up you don't want to get up into that collision or you'd start having bales loading on top and we don't want that I think that's good enough um, let's go ahead and get our width and we'll just kind of zoom down here. I think we can come all the way out to these uh, binder rails. That should be good. And we're in the center, so we shouldn't have to worry about looking at the other side. I'm happy with that. Height-wise, let's just kind of zoom it up or scale it up. I don't know why I keep saying zoom. Usually you can go a little bit above that headache crack up here. Now we can simply come over here and move it to where we can just, what I use as a, as a trick is you can see that highlighted line again. I want to bring it so it's just visible on top of that trailer like so. So that is the load area trigger. Um, make it somewhat simple, I'm going to actually hit control D and we're going to come into here and we're going to pick up trigger left. I'm going to copy that line that name paste it into here now the pickup is actually what it is saying is this is where it's going to pick product up I didn't get real crazy I would think you're probably better off going like this and zooming out like that but what he uses is just kind of the same shape as the load trigger so I just I zoom or scale I want to keep seeing zoom I apologize I scaled out a little bit and then I literally took it and just pulled it away from the trailer because you're not going to be driving that close to your product anyway. And then what I did is I kind of scaled it so it's a little higher. And what you can do is, as a rule of thumb, I dropped it below the mud flap so that way you know you're into the ground a little bit. So you're going to pick everything up on the ground. As you can see, it's still as high, just about as high as the original trigger. So I would say that's good enough. And we're just going to, again, just kind of get it fairly close to the trailer. That should work. Then if we just simply hit Control D on this guy, and we come in here and just copy the pickup trigger right name, go back in, and we just paste that name in. And if you simply go up to the X translate and hit a negative, you just basically mirrored that same shape on the other side. So now we have our three triggers, but what we need to do is actually go in and add a rigid setting to it. So for that, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to open up his mod. I had it open, but I want to open up. That way I can show you where this information is. And what you can do as well, if you're not familiar with the mapping, if you go into the XML and you say, for example, trigger node, so you can hit Control F hit next and you'll get down to your mapping you'll see it's 00500191 um, and a way to actually look for that if we open it up I know where it's at so I can kind of cheat a little bit but let's see if we can get this on screen to actually help us a little bit let's scroll this over so again, we're looking for zero, zero. So as you can see, that's zero. We're in zero, zero, and then we want five. 
So you simply go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we want 0, 0. So there's 0, 0. Then we want 19, 1. So obviously that's way down there. But as we can see, here again we have autoloader. So we know we're in the right section. So this, this shows you where his triggers are. Um, all these are the same um, rigid body setting. Uh, kinematic is the type. If you go to this button, it actually shows you the bits that you can click. Um, but I did find a trick where you can just copy these numbers. Now, you do have to watch it. And what I do is I actually save it, close, and then open it back up. Because sometimes that collision mask doesn't take. You just have to do it a couple of times. I've had it work, sometimes not. I just suggest that way if you don't, you, you know you get rid of that problem. You're not going, why is this not working? You, need, you know you need to come in and fix that. And the reason I scaled all of these guys is if you can see, there is no scale. Um, in fact, you can't even access the scale boxes once you select kinematic. Now, if you come into here and switch it to d dynamic, nope, it's not dynamic, static maybe? Static you can, but the issue is is sometimes you might change that mask and we don't want to do that. So I try to get all my scales and no big deal if you get a mess and if you got to change them, you can always come back in and change your your mask hex. So with all that being said, I'm just gonna simply go to rigid body. I'm gonna hit control C to copy those numbers. Come over to my triggers. I'm gonna go to in your um, attributes, we can get rid of this material. We're just going to hit rigid body and then once we do that you can see that pops up here as a tab again we're going to go to kinematic and there was trigger checked as well and then i'm just going to simply paste that number in now i think if you hit enter it applies it we'll see if we have any problems <laughs> and then what you want as well is you can go non-renderable so it's actually not going to be visible in game and then i think they use distance blending as well I don't like clicking the visibility off because then you can't physically see that box even though it's invisible. You just see the lines, the, um, the triangles and vertices in there. So I like to keep that checked just so you can see it when you click on it. Because like I said, nothing more annoying when you're clicking on stuff and you can't physically see it. Um, so again, we just do the same things with, with these guys. We're going to go rigid body. We're going to go kinematic, trigger. We're going to paste in those numbers. I'm going to go to shape. We're going to go distance blending, non renderable. We're good. Come back over to this one. Rigid body, rigid body, kinematic, trigger, paste, enter, shape. We got distance and non renderable. So when we click through those, these all should be the same and they are so we're gonna go ahead and save this I'm gonna close it out and do like I said before just to verify that it took and make sure you get rid of that light I almost forgot that which we're a little bit away from being done visuals auto load load trigger so, okay, so it took this time, I think doing the enter, making sure you hit enter before you save. Like I said, a lot of times you'll come back in and it'll be that, I think it's FF, which I can't even remember what the default settings are. So let's get rid of this light before I forget. Because that'll give us some errors if we don't. So we need to add in our mapping. So if we come back, we have the trigger node, which that's the other guy. Sorry about that. So we have load area trigger. So we simply go load area trigger. You can simply highlight this, hit control C to copy it. And we're just gonna paste it in there. Now these names don't matter. This does. So you can have one, two, four, seven, or blah blah in these areas for IDs as long as this matches up here where you want it. And like I said, this has to match in Giants Editor what you want. I personally try to keep them the same. There is a mapping software, maybe I'll try to link that as well, where you can actually export all these nodes. The only issue with that is, is if you have 
all oh, something that's named the same. Like if I was to, for example, hit auto load there and auto load there, it would automatically name auto load zero, auto load one. Just thought I'd give you that as a heads up. So then we have pickup trigger left. So there's our pickup trigger left. Now you don't have to, but in theory you should keep these all in, in order, but again, whoops, and I did that wrong. It as long as it's done correctly, it doesn't matter what the order they're in. It's just nice when you're trying to troubleshoot, trying to get it corrected. So again, trigger right. Paste that. And then we have our load area. So I should actually have the load area above, but again, it doesn't matter. Just to make the eyes happy, we'll just hit shift, home, home, control, X. Here to make a line in shift home control V and there we go as you can see it's 630 631 2 and so on um, so now that is done in fact if you want to you can actually come in here and you can type in auto load mapping and if you hit control Q on any line it'll actually strike it out so it doesn't affect any of the um, coding it just labels it for you and same thing here if you want to start in here you could set you could type in auto load params just so that way you know where it is okay so we're set on the mapping now is where all this comes in that actual load area I want to show you what I do to cheat on this um, if we go load area we can kind of get an idea where the front left is going. So that's basically what it is, is you want to know where the left right corner offset is. Well, I found if you just simply come in here and just hit zero, zero, and zero, and move that node to the left corner in the front, it actually works fine. If you wanted to leave it wherever and then know where that's at, you can then put that offset in. But like I said, I just set that to zero. In fact, I think if you got rid of that line, it would be fine. And then I actually put where my front left corner is. That may be wrong, and we'll. See. I'm pretty sure it's working for me. There may be a reason not to do it this way, but this is what I'm doing. It just makes it easier that way. I can move it around, not have to change things in XML. But what I do to find that is I hit Create Primitive Cube. I'm going to make a little cross here. Cut that. I'm going to paste it in. And then what I do as well is I'll just scale this down to like 0 0.01, um, scale this to 0 0.01, and then we'll make this like a 10, and it just makes a long line. We're going to simply take this like so. We're going to move it to the, and my speed's all jacked up again. I'll slow that back down. We're just going to take this to the bottom of the deck. So like so, and I can actually make this a little smaller. Let's add a zero in there. Yeah, and we're going to hit Control D to add another one, and we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. So we have a crosshair. I did the wrong way. Zero, 90 degrees. I don't really want that one, but well, I'm going to get it right one of these days. There we go. So now when I hit load area, I actually have a crosshair. So then we can... Once we get our deck height, so what I do is again, is I actually just take it until you can't see it, bring it up just a little bit, like so, and then we're gonna bring it all the way over to the front. And we can just basically, run, well, I'm gonna line it up with that steel. In fact, I'll go back just a tad so you can just see the steel and back up a little bit we're actually gonna let's raise it if we can utilize that a little bit Oop, don't want to rotate I want to make sure you don't have any scales or rotations that's one of the things in the in the readme on their website we can just get into that a little bit I think I'll like that better and then we can cheat the load area trigger has a scale of 2.556 so if you simply go into your calculator, like so, and we go 2.556 divided by 2, it's 1.278. So if we come into here, translate 1.278, 
that in theory should be the edge of our load area trigger and once again if we want to see that we can just simply turn off that non-renderable as you can see we are pretty close to that cube it looks like it's a little higher but I think that's because of that that steel part I was talking about but I'm gonna go ahead yeah, it's quite a bit lower. Let's let's still bring that up. Whatever your trigger shape, non render. Yeah, so we're just down into that a little bit. So I'm not really crazy. I'm gonna go off of our load area. I think. In fact, let's let's move it back. Like so. I'm gonna grab this load area shape, non renderable, and I'm actually gonna manipulate manipulate it. So it matches. Let's see if we can get this. It's kind of a weird looking angle, isn't it? And that should be fine. It's just behind that. We are hanging off a little bit, but I think we'll be okay. So go back in, shut that shape off. We don't need these cubes anymore. Like I said, I just wanted to use this to visualize. It gives you, it's hard to see with these this gid or uh, uh, widget I think they call this guy it's hard to really s I, I, there may be a setting in the view or something to actually extend it out but anyway that is our front left area so that being done I think we're good I'm gonna save this go ahead and close it oh I did forget we do have to add in so that corner offsets fine I don't mess with these I think we're good on those that's just basically telling it to go to the left or I'm sorry, off load, off load, on load right, it goes to the right three, down one. Um, I did mess up. We do need this one more time because I have to put in those parameters. So again, we're clicking here, visuals, auto load, trigger. So our length is our scale Z, so 11.216, 11.216, in fact, let's cheat, and I, yeah, it's not going to let me copy, so 11.216, 11.216, 11.216, that's your scale X, 2.556, so 2.556 height this is I was testing this a little bit what's odd is on the square bell 120s it doesn't seem to affect it but on everything else like the euro pallets if I put four in there it'll go four high but I'm gonna leave it at my scale just because so it's 2.313 and we can test that 2.313 um, that trigger on the original version watching Mighty Mike's video, it actually affects how high things are, but these, this number, I think actually works as a number to say, Hey, you can only stack so many high. Anyhow, I will get it. I will show it in game and that way you can see what's going on. Now what I do, I go ahead and just put in bogus numbers for this right now. I'm just going to add two zeros or make it at least a hundred because I'll show you how and this is basically made so you can limit how many objects but I like to have them in there just that way you can go in and see what it is set at because I'll show you once we're in game the the help menu is going to show you how many are able to load in that area and I actually kind of show you it's kind of a cool thing if you hit tip area you can see as well where they're actually going to go so at this point and again, we, we're going to set our max objects at 180 for the square, 120. I just don't want 480 bales on there. It's just a little much. I think you'd start causing some lag in the game engine. So we're going to save this. We'll go ahead and leave that open in the background. We'll open the game up. I'm sorry I always go a little long, but I try to get really in-depth of what's going on. I want to make sure I load it. There's the auto-load BD start I was doing the video yesterday and I went in and it wasn't there 
but I forgot to enable the actual mod. I haven't had a whole lot of extra time to play the game, so you start getting a little rusty on certain things like that. Shoot, I even started and forgot to plug in my controller. I'm I'm lost without a without a game pad. So we're gonna go into the the game or the store here, and I left it in low loaders for now. You can always change that. So there it is, steel drop deck, auto load BD. And then here's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the configuration auto load, so let's buy that one. And then non-auto load, we can buy that one so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. So if we go in our little truck here, we'll grab the non-auto load. I don't have, if I had a course play, I could click a button and show you my screen to show you what I'm talking about. But as you can see, if you look there, it's open AI work menu, toggle speed, on load, and so on. You do not see auto load in there. But if we drop that guy, come over and grab the first one, now you see enable auto load. So what I want to show you, as you can see, Euro palette, it says 54. Um, as you can see in the XML, Euro palette is 100. I said I want to make a big number to show you what I was talking about. So you could literally just come in here and hit 54. Um, then you could hit, say, Z to go to the next loading type, liquid tank, 8. So we could come in here and type in 8, and so on. Just, I like to have numbers correct, but I just wanted to show you that. We're probably going to end up changing this length a little bit anyway to fit um, the right amount of square 120s, because if you don't, it's a little goofy. What we can also do, in fact, I'm going to jump out. I'm going to show you the easy dev right off the bat here. So you hit F12 if you have GTX is easy dev. I'm gonna actually go in and um, just remove vehicles because I don't wanna have that other one messing me up. I have to rebuy it. But then we can actually add bales with this is what's cool. You can set your fields and all that stuff. So it's a really, really cool mod to have. So let's go back in and buy this truck. And then I just didn't wanna have two trailers there messing with me. And low loader, steel drop deck, auto load. Okay, so I want to show you another thing that's kind of cool that I was talking about. I think that's where that load trigger comes in. When you hit your tip side, which is, oh, I have my gamepad enabled right now, so it's going to, i got to hit Z to get out of it. So if I hit U for tip side left, Obviously, you see how it puts it there, but the cool thing is see how it's actually showing you on your trailer where they're going to go, and I think that's where that trigger comes in. So this is kind of a handy little thing to just kind of go through as well. If I hit Z, now we're on uh, big bag pallets. So you're going to see how those will load. As you can see, there's room, in, there's not enough room in the very back to get another one, so if you always want to try to add maybe a little bit more length, you just don't want to, you don't want to get into this ramp or when you go to fold and unfold that ramp it'd cause you some issues so um, I just want to kind of show you that so if we hit uh, let's go so it's big bag big bags it's overload I haven't find the euro euro pallet overloaded but it's just nice because it shows you where stuff is gonna fit on there and them have to be staggered around by 180 now here's where I want to check and I think we're actually okay Usually the first attempt at this I mess up and on the back instead of being front to back they're sideways But I actually got it big enough this time. So that's cool. So I'm gonna pull this guy kind of off to the side And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I Keep bringing up my uh, there we go my gamepad. I use my gamepad So it changes the, the help menu, but we want to Enable auto load which is B in the keyboard and then I'm just gonna jump out and I'm going to start throwing bales on the ground. It's kind of cool because it'll actually start taking them. So we go to objects, square, 120 grass. And if I start throwing them on the ground, as you can see, it automatically starts taking them. So again, 12. And the cool thing is I can sit here and do this until we get a full 180, which I don't know how long that would take. But I should have put the max a little different. <laughs> But as you can see, I'm already, I don't know if you can see on this on the video as well, but we're already three high. So it's a little goofy on that parameter I was talking about um, on that height restriction. But if I come in and we go 
I to unload. If I hit F12, this cool thing about this as well, I can actually remove bales. Continue. If we go to, oh, let's go to farm products, seeds. And you gotta watch if you're in a vehicle, throw it in front. So we wanna get over here. So let's go F12. Oops, farm product seeds. I'm gonna just start throwing a few of these on the ground. And I hit B to start auto load. Oh, I don't want. Uh, let's see. I gotta get switched to. Big bag pellets, or big bags. I'm trying to remember what it is now. It's not those. Big bag pellets, there we go. But it's underneath, so it's going to cause me some issues. So <laughs> that's why you got to watch where you start spawning them, or you can run into some issues. Let's just do this. Let's just get out of here and remove pellets. And we'll just come over here and throw it off to the side. 12. If you start stacking them too much, yeah, see, I got it on top of the vehicle again. And then it doesn't want to load it correctly. As you can see, it's fighting me here. And as you can see, those tension straps keep popping on and off. So if you're moving around those tension straps aren't holding it, you can really have an issue. So it's still enabled. Let's get off to the side. Let's get over here at 12. And we'll throw some more on the ground. So let's see. So them are only going one high. And I know I had them too high before. So I think that's where your height. So the height must be affected off that actual trigger being higher. But if I come into here and I actually type in just for the heck of it, let's type in a three. Unfortunately, we do have to close the game out. I should have saved it so I had all that stuff on there still. So most mods, you can reload them with this um, easy dev controls as well if you're not familiar with it. But because this is using a script, unfortunately, you can't do that. So what you do is you actually just hit F12 and you come into the vehicle and you can actually reload or reload and reset. So reload just basically reloads i3D and XML. Reload reset will actually set it back to original state as purchased. So if it's folded, it would unfold or fold it back, whatever it's set up at the store. So that's a very cool. You can act, you can also uh, um, add or subtract dirt and wear as well. So that's kind of a cool little feature to to test your mod out. Oh, and I screwed up. Apologize. I did this earlier like a dumb dumb. I forgot to select the mod. I was thinking I saved the game. So I'll burn up a little more time here. I apologize. I guess at this point you see what you can do. So you actually just close out and do your own thing, but. I just like to try to add things in here, show you some examples. Okay. Go in, trailers, low loaders, grab that guy, auto load. I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, I'm not going to save because sometimes, like I said, being it's using a script, it doesn't even like it if you have a pre-purchased vehicle. So I'm going to jump out. So let's go ahead and select big bags, I think is what it was. And we're going to enable auto load. And come over here, hit F12, go to Objects, Seeds. That is not what it was, so B for auto load. It's not 
Euro pallet. It's not liquid tank. Big bag pallets. Okay, there we go. So we got one on there. And as you can see, it went up to 28. What was it before, though? Big bags for 100, so. Hopefully we got more height out of it, but we'll find out here. Yeah, we're going too high this time. Okay. So as you can see, we just needed a little more height, so we're actually getting 28 now. So like I said, the height thing, I don't really get the trigger. kind of gives you a visual. But I don't quite get if it actually does anything. And what's odd is it's not loading... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, it's not picking up the full 28, but we might. It's a little bit buggy. Sometimes, it'll, like right there, I just kind of screwed up. As you can see, what happens if you get things too close or you start affecting that loading area. And again, I think that's where that trigger comes in. Yeah, see how it's throwing them all off? It, it'll. I think it's a little bit buggy, and I'm not saying I know how to do the scripting any better. So let's do the off to the right eye to unload. I just think what happens is you get things in the way, and then it causes some issues. Cause yeah, see it's they're showing 28. Okay, we got them all on there. But if you wanted to try to force two more on there, it would just. I think it'd be too far off the back. As you can see, it just can't quite fit another one on there. But that's where that height comes in. I thought it was actually numbers, but it must have to do with the actual trigger. And if you hit F5, there's so many things going on there, it's hard to really see. But that trigger, as you can see, is just a little bit below. You can see that line cutting through there. I remember I had to up it a little bit, so if you wanted to actually get... If you actually wanted to change it to where you actually seen what you had here, you'd actually have to cha change your scale to 3.313. So you'd have to come into here and actually, so we go to rigid body, switch it to dy uh, static, and transform. And you'd have to change this to th 3, 3.13. Oops, I don't want to do that. 3.313. 3.313. And then you would come over to this guy. And raise it up. But as you can see, then you're starting to get really high up into the air. So, bridge your body, kinematic, hit save. And that just is your visual, like I said. It doesn't seem to, the XML is what seems to really affect things. But hopefully that was helpful. I'm not going to uh, waste any more, any more time. We're already 50 minutes in, close to it. Hopefully that gives you an idea where to start. Um, any questions, always feel free to leave a message on the video or ask a question. If the best way I can help you guys if you do have a question I usually check daily is if you simply Google my name so BDBSSB um, and go to the Wix page here and just simply hit the discord button or contact same thing it's BDBSSB's discord but if you click that it'll give you an invite to my discord channel um, that's the easiest way and like I said, I get on there almost daily unless I really got stuff going on and obviously YouTube. And I just haven't had time to do much Twitch. But and as well, if you want to check out, I got a few mods on here. I'm still working on adding some. I have production equipment, some placeables as well. Um, so, yeah. Any questions, be sure to contact me. I'm always uh, looking forward to helping people out. So have a great one. Thanks.